We've made it to the end of the course and hopefully survived. We've really covered a lot of ground in this course and you should have a much better understanding of how to develop for the iOS platform. So the big question is what's next? To begin with, take a break. Learning to become an iOS developer can sometimes feel like you're drinking from a fire hose. It's a good idea to take a break and let some of these ideas settle in. But don't wait too long. You really want to put this stuff into action as soon as you can. With that in mind, I highly recommend you start building a concrete app of your own. Keep it relatively simple, but make sure it's something you're passionate about building. Every app has its own unique set of challenges, and working through those challenges is where the real understanding of these concepts sets in. Another great idea is to get plugged into your local iOS community. I run a user group in the Twin Cities called Cocoa Heads. If you happen to be from the Twin Cities, please stop by as it would be great to meet you. But you'll find Cocoa Heads groups, NS Coder Nights, and iOS meetup groups all over the place. These can be a great opportunity to network with and learn from other like-minded people. And of course, never stop learning. The iOS platform continues to rapidly grow and change, so there's always something new to learn. I've been doing this for a few years, yet my backlog of things to learn never seems to get shorter. The topics we've covered in this course are pretty common to most apps, but there are lots of ancillary frameworks such as core data, core graphics, and core animation that you'll likely use as well as your experience grows. Thanks for joining me, and I hope this course has helped kickstart your iOS development efforts. Take care.